Madeline died on the 3rd of May 2007 and on that same evening Madeline went into the ground. Stefan Birch tem 47 anos e é a figura do dia. Este empresário sumo-africano diz ter descoberto os restos mortais de Medi numa propriedade a escassos metros do aldeamento Ocean Club, de onde a menina desapareceu a 3 de maio de 2007. Stefan baseia a sua teoria no que diz ter sido mais de um ano e três meses de investigação. A investigação ficou concluída nos últimos 15 dias, à altura em que se deslocou ao Algarve para recolher o que considera ser a conclusão da sua pesquisa. Veio com mais dois sumo-africanos e, inclusive a Vilma Andamei, entraram numa propriedade privada, fazendo uma prospeção da área onde julgam estar o corpo de Medi. O Expresso confirmou, junto de um geólogo, que a máquina utilizada para fazer o scan do terreno é a tecnologia mais avançada que existe para esse efeito atualmente. Também confirmámos com o mesmo especialista que o resultado dessa prospeção revela que existe alguma coisa enterrada no local, embora não seja possível identificar o quê, o que significa que pode ser qualquer coisa e não necessariamente os restos mortais de Madeline McCann. Conheça Stephen Birch numa entrevista exclusiva ao Expresso, dada no aeroporto de Lisboa, quando regressava à África do Sul, dia 28 de junho. Eu me tornei interessado no caso há um ano atrás, e comecei a ler sobre o caso, realized that a tremendous effort had been put in by the Portuguese police and the British police in trying to solve the case. And uh, it was then that uh, I decided that I wanted to see if I could help. And uh, I began reading uh, all the do available documentation about the case, about approximately about 12,000 pages. And it took me about a year uh, at great financial and emotional cost to myself. Initially, my team was uh, four people, but uh, when I came to Pride de Luz, I had to bring IT people with me uh, who were specialized, who, who assisted me with regard to um, the technical aspect of undertaking this investigation and also setting up all the machinery required to uh, be able to do what we did. We brought very sophisticated machinery in. We brought a Marlow ground penetrating radar machine in. Um, and basically the, uh, the machine uh, locates cavities in the ground um, where ground has been disturbed uh, and the machine can then show you uh, subsurface conditions of the ground uh, and it was through the use of this machine that we believe that uh, we've located the remains of Madeline. You know, without the technology, uh, one only has a hypothesis. One of the things that I did do was I undertook a, a significant amount of mapping uh, of the area to determine the routes and distances and I overlaid those maps uh, in terms of activities and various things that occurred in that area uh, and that it, it, um, it certainly uh, narrowed down the options as to where Madeline could be buried but at the end of the day it was technology that um, confirmed my hypothesis and my suspicions. Our investigation has shown that Madeline's remains are buried beneath a rear second driveway uh, of the property known as Casa Leona in Praia de Luz. Well Casa Leona is a, is a large property, it's a large villa and it initially well it has a very large driveway on the on the on the northern side of the property but this area where Madeline is actually buried uh, a new driveway, a secondary, less important driveway, was constructed over her. I, I personally don't believe that that driveway serves any purpose. It's a small little driveway, uh, you can hardly turn a vehicle on it, and it's covered in uh, pebble stone. And um, so I believe that this second driveway on the property was constructed over her. Uh, the, the property is approximately 174 meters away from where Madeline went missing and uh, uh, I certainly believe that um, Madeline's remains lie buried beneath that driveway. The scans from the machine uh, presented three hyperbola on, uh, uh, on the scans and they clearly show that something is buried uh, approximately between 400 and 650 millimeters below ground level. Um, what happens when a body decomposes is that it shrinks in size leaving a cavity uh, which was the original area where the body was and it's that cavity that, that we are looking for when we use that type of equipment.
uh, without going into too much detail, my hypothesis is based, and I agree with Mr. Amaral, uh, who put a tremendous effort into this case, that Madeline's body went, uh, uh, went into the ground that same evening. In other words, I don't believe that Madeline's body was transported in a motor vehicle 23 days later. Madeline died on the 3rd of May 2007, and on that same evening, Madeline went into the ground. The investigation was made very difficult by various factors. The first factor was that the bulk of the witnesses actually left the crime scene and went back to their respective countries, being England. Uh, it makes an investigation very difficult when one has to conduct an investigation and your witnesses evaporate into thin air and go home to their countries. That's the first problem. The second problem was language. Language, uh, the Port uh, Portuguese investigators having to interview um, um, English-speaking uh, witnesses and then also having to rely on British investigators to conduct questions uh, on their behalf uh, made it very difficult for them because in an investigation, uh, a, 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 an investigator normally would be able to change his uh, questions at the spur of a moment. When one is undertaking in questions over long distance, it makes it very, very difficult. And then the third uh, factor that made it very, very difficult for this investigation was the tremendous international response that occurred worldwide and all the various sightings that occurred. Uh, I believe that this had a, had a, a, a negative effect on the investigation, whereas the investigation should have been narrowed down to the Praia de Luz area it spread out and became an international investigation, putting pressure on the availability of um, uh, re resources for the police. The equipment that I brought, the Marla Ground Penetrating Radar Machine, is probably one of the best machines in the world. Um, I'm, I'm, I cannot say whether the Portuguese police uh, have equipment of that standard or better, uh, or whether this was just a case of them just having missed um, uh, a body, which is which is a is, is quite easy under the circumstances. Um, Madeline was only 90 centimeters tall, uh, weighed 18.5 kilograms, and if folded half, she would only be 45 centimeters, which is uh, uh, quite easy to miss uh, something of that size in a large property. If they decide not to uh, uh, undertake the uh, excavation they could uh, take legal action against me for, tre for illegally trespassing on the property, not once, but four times. So I've decided to fly back to South Africa, release the information worldwide on the internet, and, um, and uh, then uh, hope and, and plead that the Portuguese police will immediately obtain the, a necessary uh, warrant, enter the property, excavate the site, and uh, exhume the, uh, the remains. If they are successful, uh, I will have no problem in uh, returning back to Portugal to assist them further with their investigation. I've uh, appointed two major legal firms to represent me. Um, the first is DLA Piper in London. Um, my uh, attorney there is Eben Black. And then in South Africa, I've appointed DLA Cliff Decker Hoffmeyer. Um, both firms are um, and I'm represented there by uh, Toby Yordan. Both firms are, are very large international legal firms and they will both be acting uh, and representing me in this matter. I've been working more than a year on this case. Um, I'm, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, it has cost me a lot of money uh, and I'd, I'd like to see closure on this case for all parties concerned um, and uh, yeah, that, I think I'd like to see closure on behalf of yeah. everybody. A polícia portuguesa encontra-se a analisar estes dados, como aliás garantiu ao Expresso que analisou todos os dados que lhes chegaram sobre o caso Medi nos últimos cinco anos. Entretanto, a Scott Maniard já pediu a Stephen Birch para lhe enviar mais material no sentido de examinarem a consistência da teoria deste sumo africano. Esteja viva e cativa ou morta e enterrada, o certo é que Medi continua a suscitar o interesse de várias pessoas à volta do mundo. O último foi precisamente Stephen Birch, que já investiu milhares de euros nesta investigação.